everybody. Welcome to this course, Little Italy's flagship podcast for master naturalists. My name is Ian. And I'm Chad Smith, your fl- your favorite blanket commando. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Um, we're going to start things off by talking about the news. Uh, this is a weekly... All right, starting over. Every week, we're going to choose a different news network. And this week, we've decided to look at OAN and just go through their articles, talk about them, see what we think... And go from there, really. And for the folks at home that don't know, OAN stands for One America, which I think everybody can get behind. That's kind of the point, you know, to have One America. Uh, if you've ever talked to anybody on the internet from South America, they will never let you forget. It is One <laughs> America, because the place that you're in, uh, we're in, really, is the United States, not America. Really, there's two Americas, North and South. Well... I think there's the uh, deep America and the surface America, but that's just me. Like a like a deep state America? No, it's literally just underground. Oh, so like the cool kids. Yeah, I guess you don't go spelunking, <laughs> but that's fine. Oh, I go oh. spelunking all the time. So there's like a whole civilization just below the Earth's surface. Yeah, we call that deep America. That's cool. where my parents are from. Fun parents. All right, so what's our what's our first article? Uh, well, honestly. We could we could just ta- I mean anything on here looks good but the one I was eyeing earlier, Representative Scalise, you know <laughs> out, that's my Italian comrade over there. Yeah, Americans are rejecting socialism, and he's looking like a just a bright cherry tomato, you know, very very fat, very healthy, loving the front picture. So the, for the for the article, the title of the article is that Americans are rejecting socialism. Yeah, well that's well they're quoting this guy Republican Scalise. Uh, who is the House Majority of Whip, and I definitely know what that is. I know I, what that I, is. I've watched House of Cards. Exactly. That's how you know? I know what it is. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm not allowed to say that because uh, what's-his-face died or whatever. No, he got canceled. Oh, we've all been Wait, there. did he also die? No, he's he's fine. Oh, he's, <laughs> okay. Which is really too good. It's too good for him. He, sh- he deserves worse. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving right along here. So uh, this guy, he's he's a Republican – um house house rep house of representatives guy okay he's um in louisiana okay and he says that the special election in texas confirms that america is rejecting socialism and i just gotta say one thing here it's good to be attacked by the enemy here i mean <laughs> i would want this fucking cherry tomato looking ass oh fucking uh coming at me um you know at one of the parks downtown at night you know one of the cru- cruising ones. Uh, anyway, sorry. He's really not One of the sexy. cruising parks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what that means. Yeah, but I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he, he seems to think that because, you know, Texas is doing what Texas does and uh, just puts in a bunch of f- guys with f- huge fucking boots that, you know, they bought from Cavenders or, well, if you're like an oil guy, it's like Cavenders Plus Plus, which they only let you in if you're like 60 plus plus and also white plus plus <laughs> and um <clears throat> you know they you get the, you get the big boots you got the big hat and a bolo tie and and a te- for whatever reason Texas just love that look and they want you as their representative to either be that or have a really fat face or be have both of those things and i'm sure this Scalise guy uh sees that and is like oh yeah all's right in the world God's in his throne, which is in, uh, uh, uh fuck, uh, Amarillo. I, is there, is there an Aberdeen, Texas? <laughs> I, it sounds like, it, it sounds like that would, that's a place, Aberdeen. I mean, I know for a fact there's an Aberdeen in uh, Hong Kong. What is that, a bar? It's just a region, a bunch of houses and shit. Like Kowloon, like, you, ever, you know about Kowloon? Dude, I would never go to Hong Kong if it was my fucking if it was free. Oh, dude, I I actually highly recommend it. I don't want to go to one of those socialist countries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Like, you know, as a as a Texan myself, uh deep Texas that is. Um <clears throat> you know, I really see I really agree with 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 uh Scalise and his his takes on Texas. 
Uh, you know, he's saying stuff like, whether it's Nancy Pelosi's agenda, now Biden has embraced the far left Bernie Sanders agenda. He hasn't, by the way. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> People don't want this to become a socialist nation. R Honestly, I would I would have expected OAN to like really, really get in deep with this. But uh, you know what? This is not the first time I've been surprised by AON. Obviously, they're running, they're running this story because they have an agenda, right? Well, yeah. But you know, what's crazy is that OAN, uh, several years back, was basically like <laughs> got in trouble with the liberals for being slightly anti-war. It's kind of like the Blaze. Or like the the Duran, it's like those those weird like conservative websites that are not uh, that are not explicitly like neocons. And so sometimes because they're just they have a bunch of nutty ass weirdos running them. Sometimes they they have that weird like schizo like cl clock is is um, right twice a day thing. But on this, they're <laughs> fucking wrong. Even though this is like all reported very factually, which is surprising um it's very much sticking to the facts which i guess i appreciate it sounds like you're going into this article with a bit of bias oh my god <laughs> well yeah dude i mean oan is literally one letter from oar which is sh uh up shit creek without one i don't know oh <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, Sorry, I just hate oars. I'm more of a kayak guy. I don't, I don't paddle with a oar. I paddle with a whatever, a paddle. I mean, there's a very like clear and obvious like reinforcing of the social bubble that these conservatives are in, and that their readers are obviously also in. Because I know a lot of Americans, um, especially people my age and younger. Like socialism is fucking booming. Actually, like just That's the I you live in an echo chamber. Well, we kind of all do, thanks to social media and the way news networks are set up. I don't. I mean, it, it. you have to make an effort to not, really. Like, you have to, like, look outside of your usual sources of information just to make sure you're getting, like, a full picture of what's happening. And yeah. pretty much nobody does that. Like, a couple people do. But, like, usually because it's, like, their job and they work at a news source that has to be objective or something, you know? Or they work for, like, a late night show and they have to, like, look at all the different news sources and, like, riff on them. But that's pretty much, like, the only... The, uh, that and, like, huge nerds. Like, I know a bunch of huge nerds that just, like, read news sources from everybody, which is pretty dope. But, like, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you where you're going with it. Um, you were basically saying that if you read the news, you're a huge nerd. If you care about current events, you're a nerd. And I That's pretty much that. what it amounts to these days. Like, it takes that type of person to have the diligence to make sure they, like, have enough information yeah, and it it, does, it also doesn't help that 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 people are more increasingly turning to sites like like OAN to uh, read what in this last uh, example was actually just factual reporting. I mean, it's not the conclusion is not true. Obviously, it's just one guy saying that one guy that they like. Yeah. But there's no editorial bent to this clear agenda, whereas you you can get some some tricks of editing from from the the paper of record you know the new york times like they, they'll they'll use m manipulation tactics and like misleading headlines to steer the narrative in the in the, in the and just straight up fabrications and unconfirmed happenings in the world that that are backed tenuously by non-evidence to present their narrative where as we're looking at OAN here, and they're like, yeah, this guy said that socialism sucks. And it's like, <laughs> it's not that the site themselves is saying that. They're showcasing it. But, like, the guy they're saying is the one that sucks. And they're not really commenting on his suckiness. Besides yeah. just the editorial decision to feature the thing. I mean, and, but... And we can maybe delve a little bit deeper into sort of where... You know, a, a, a more uh, a, an article that has more room to to have some some editorial play here, because that at the end of the day, you know, that's really how uh, media is is manipulated is by editorial standards. You know, I'm I'm always thinking about this, and like people people always fucking go to this like this thing like 
ooh, you know, insert whatever scare group controls the media. They control the media. Oh, the censorship or oh, whatever, you know, but and it's like there's some big shadowy cabal of people running everything. And that's what people think. It's not that at all. It's literally editorial standards are part of being a journalist. I mean, there's obviously a shadowy cabal controlling the way the world works. Yeah, I mean, I'm in, char- I'm in, I'm in charge of it. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even say, like, I, I'm just being real here. I wouldn't even say that it's fucking shadowy. Like, you just have to follow the money all the way up, and you'll figure out who's who's funding what. Okay, well, don't, well, don't be anti-Semitic. <laughs> so. uh, no promises? <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I see what you're saying. There, You can follow the money and... and and, Which is like the most conspiracy theorist bullshit to say. Just follow, yeah. follow the money. But it's fucking true. Like, yeah. Well, the you, new endowment for democracy literally put puts all of their grant money, like everybody that's awarded their grant money, up for public knowledge. I mean, and yeah. every every freaking like you know regime change operation and like weird like political lobby group is very very except for who's donating. I mean, there's a little bit of cover up when that comes to that but they're very clear about their goals and they're very clear about where their money's going mm-hmm. and they're very clear about where it's coming from unless it's for the most part yeah and and so yeah i guess it is it is follow money is a good is a good critical tool as an example um i was recently arguing with somebody on facebook fucking oh shocker God, you, you gotta quit and, that uh, shit. yeah i i agree i do have to quit it's a bad habit anyway i was doing that and this guy Just kept argue with me instead. This, <laughs> and this guy kept coming at me with like these bad faith arguments that are based on very little information. Not that they, not that he was presenting them in bad faith, but was like the person who taught them to him was, you know. Was he hot though? I mean, well, actually, yeah. Okay, so it's okay. Well, so you lost the argument. It's uh, duh, but I, <laughs> I tried anyway. Anyway, he showed me this article that supported his opinion, and all I had to do was just like Google the source of the article. And follow that shit up. Turns out it was owned by Bernie Madoff indirectly, but it was a Bernie Madoff site. Ooh, I love that guy, Bernie Madoff. He's like the he's like the Alibaba and the Forty Thieves. He's the he's like the, you know what I'm saying? He's the thief of thieves. <laughs> you know? He he he's the, he thieves from thieves. L- literally, also thieves respect him because he, <laughs> he. I mean, and the screwed up thing about Bernie Madoff, like, we're getting off track here, but but I just want to say this: the, maybe not screwed up, but the, but the most hilarious thing, and I think the most indicative thing of this about like where it's not like a a single shadowy cabal or like people that are like just these fucking dastardly evil people in an ivory tower. It's literally just people that get swept up in shit. They get swept yeah, up in that's, that's most of it. Just whatever the fuck. I mean, and, which and is by design, actually. Yeah, that's editorial standards. It's a system of of requiring you to kowtow or however you fucking say that. I don't fucking speak English. Toe the line. It's like my seventh language. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's it's <clears throat> the first one is sarcasm and the second one's irony. All right, I'm over it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's the whole point of this 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 shit is that it's like people are are just doing what they they think that they're acting rationally and they're like, oh yeah, I have to I have to like work within these power channels. I have to present this particular view. I have to use these um, you know editor meet these editorial standards. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job. I'm not doing my due diligence as a journalist. And I guarantee you. Some jack off that's fucking writing regime change fucking fan fiction for the <laughs> New York Times is is thinking the same thing that Mr. David Shepherdson, who's writing this OAN article. I mean, he's thinking he's doing his job. That's what it comes down to. Well, yeah, it's literally like how it's set up. Like it's set up to where you have like one or two people who are being funded by like nefarious people with nefarious intentions and they establish themselves as credible and on your side and that's how they get people to like believe them and work for them and champion for them yeah like nathan fielder he's on your side oh absolutely all right so we've um we've broken down the motive uh, motivations of uh, nefarious news doers let's move on to the second article of oam Oh yeah. Ooh, this is this is this is a good one. You want to talk about the fentanyl? You want to talk about how fentanyl? I don't know, dude. I listen. I'm a chemist. <laughs> uh, that like, doesn't literally. know how to say things. Okay, it's because I'm stupid. It's because I lied it's, it's and pronounced. cheated my way through my uh, fellowship at uh, Princeton. 
<laughs> your yeah. fellowship. Yeah, the fellowship. The fellowship. It's of what happens the when you're nights. rich and you excel at everything. <laughs> like me. You get paid to go to school to pretend that you learned something at school. I love it. And then you're rewarded with a really fancy job that yeah. allows you the free time to be able to podcast from the middle of the fucking backwoods. By the way, I fly a private jet out here every every time we record. It's literally I like nepotism in action. Oh, I don't actually <clears throat> see. The thing is, I, I'm not anybody's nephew. You know what I'm is saying? That what nepotism I just, means? Yeah. Nephew? Yeah. What? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, I, maybe I'll I was lying that. when I said I don't know words. <laughs> I think I read that somewhere. All right. Uh, what's what's the second news article from OAN? <clears throat> um, you want to talk about the fentanyl? Yes. Oh yeah. Also, like I think we should like focus on like major events, right? Like what big happened that OAN has something to say about, you know? Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Secretary Blinken being a fucking rabid war hound is an everyday occurrence. There's literally no Who's difference. That? Secretary Blinken? I don't know who that is. That's that's a, that's our Secretary of that's our Secretary of State of of our fearless uh, progressive regime. <laughs> God, but you can't see me right now, but I'm fucking saluting. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's basically has the same position as, uh, the famous, uh, mustachioed, uh, you know, looking guy, fucking Mike Pompeo. Did he have a, did, no, wait, that I was, don't know who Mike Pompeo that was Bolton. Is. Anyway, it's, it this all kind of recurring just, like theme. I don't know shit. Yeah, so Secretary Blinken was the Secretary Secretary of State. Mike Pompeo didn't have a mustache. That was the other guy. Um, he was the previous Secretary of State. Um, and basically, if you don't know, Secretary of States are responsible for, um, well, really jack shit, except <laughs> except crafting genocides. Oh wow! Um, basically, they're they're sort of the the they they're the point and shoot. They're the they're the 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 foot soldiers. Of the State Department is like the foot soldiers of, of you know imperialism. They just like they they just say like, they just the president says let's do this thing and they're like, that's what we're doing and then they just attack. I feel like you're approaching your analysis of the U.S. government with a bit of bias. Oh, what do you mean? I love it here. <laughs> I literally get paid to live here. Oh, cool. What's yeah. that like? Oh, I can't really talk about it. But. All right. So, um, <laughs> what, what 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 did the Secretary of State have to say? I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to keep us on track. Oh, good luck. Um, Fenton, fentanyl. No, we're not talking about that guy. Secretary Blinken is the Secretary of State, and he basically says everything that, um, fucking Pompeo was saying about China. That oh, they're so bad. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a trade war because they're so fucking evil and they fucking copy all of our stuff and they're just they send us mickey mouse swatches that don't work and just you know all that bullshit I mean, they basically are it's a new cold war if you didn't if you didn't if you didn't wake up today or the day before that the day before that really the past two years <laughs> before this maybe even longer um we're in a cold war yeah it may not feel like it no it definitely does it feel was, like it actually it was really hot yesterday <laughs> okay but it, it's we're in that and but let's 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 talk about something that's like less depressing uh let's talk about how there's fentanyl coming in from this country all right yeah so uh read to off this, the headline of the article yeah, yeah so this this and this is my boy uh you know we went to princeton together uh mr oan newsroom <laughs> mr newsroom you should see that guy put away some pga punch boy let me tell you uh so the headline on this is fentanyl floods across U.S. southern border. All right. I have a couple issues with that. I mean, just the headline. Already we're getting into Literally it. just oh, the headline. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. obviously, fentanyl is a problem in this country. Like, I've definitely known people who, like, thought they were doing heroin, and they accidentally did fentanyl, and they died. Like, I, I know at least two people that fit that description personally, or I knew them, rather. Um, however, the article title, the headline, rather, um pretty like it's 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 obviously got like a a mexican scare slant to it right like it's definitely like got a racial bias underneath that's not even very thinly veiled it's just like be afraid of the south you know like or rather the south of the border <sighs> it just seems disingenuous from the get-go for me yeah and i i mean and 
this of course they're asking they're asking throughout this article they're they're basically relying on DEA and like law enforcement um you know what their opinions on this stuff i mean they have this, this quote basically why is fentanyl coming through here they they, they start out strong they're saying Oh, this opioid, which is 50 times more potent than heroin, obviously trying to scare people. Right. You know, it's like, well, a fucking... It's not just heroin. It's Mexican heroin. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and so there's, you know, there's... I'm, I, and I'm not trying to, like, make light of fentanyl. It is, it is a very strong drug. Oh, for sure. For sure. They're and, just, like, using that to their advantage to increase their slant. I'm sorry. Go yeah, on. Yeah, no, you're good. And, and, and so, I mean, the whole thing about this is that uh, they're they're asking law enforcement and and DEA special agent Bill Chopic, and he says, from a business side, it's a better return on investment. The name sounds made up. Oh, it is. I made I, made, I just made that up. <laughs> oh, for real? no, it's it's real. <laughs> okay. Uh, or North Carolina Sheriff Sam Page also sounds made up. Um, and I mean, basically, they're trying to to put it in terms so that the average fucking, you know fat white guy that like reads this shit uh understands and of course that's economics you know they're like it's, it's just simple economics it's supply and demand it's a bit from the, it's a better roi you guys know what that means roi and i mean <clears throat> for me it's like none of not nowhere in this article are they asking you know people who study i mean it, how 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 goods and and black markets function um across the border or or the history of any of this stuff or why or any anybody that's like a legal scholar they're asking the people that operationally this would be like me going into a laboratory and asking you know asking the person that brings the samples to the laboratory like hey what disease does this person have? Can you tell by smelling their piss? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and like drinking it, like in the old days, you know, when they used to check for diabetes. They used Wait, to drink that's not a thing anymore. Oh, did did, did you have a recent checkup or so, where the doctor drank your piss? Yeah, the doctor. Oh, I think you're. I think he's just weird. You might uh, want to. You might want to get a new doctor, bro. No, it it, it wasn't. The you drank. It was so you drank the doctor's piss. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't him. He said it was to help him. You know, I want to help my doctor. Was this one of those holistic doctors? Yeah, actually, it was just a friend of mine. <laughs> okay, so you're just admitting to me that you like water sports. <laughs> That's I cool, mean, man. no, I was just trying to help a friend. I'm a helpful <laughs> person. <laughs> That's yeah. You're pretty helpful. I, I would say you're helpful. Uh, but you're don't ever do that to me. Uh, so <laughs> if you ask, I it'll, I'll I be won't be asking. To say no. I'm not gonna be ask, asking that. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, and you know what I like? I always like to when I when I think about like perspectives and like you know, sort of the the agenda or the or the the you know the orientation this person that's writing this article is coming from. You know, I, I, I do believe that you have to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. You have to hear the people that you're opposing in their own words. But just on a on a on a operational level, if if they, if this this reads like lo a local newspaper because they're fucking asking police and DEA people when they should be asking. You know how 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 is this getting into the country? Honestly, Why I feel like a local newspaper country? would have a higher level of like uh, journalistic integrity because these guys have a clear agenda, and they don't want the real information. They want the information from the people that enforce what they're already trying to say. Ooh, you want to check that? <laughs> you want to check that? What's 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 like a what's like a classic El Paso? It's right in the name, folks. Sure, yeah. The pass. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's a border town. I mean, I assume it's a border town. I don't know geography very good, um, but I know where stuff is generally. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's some El Paso new local news. Like, I guarantee um, people who live in a border town probably have a very different reality than people who report on border towns. Very different view of what's going on there and what comes across the border. 
because like they see everything they see everyone and i'm certain that it's mostly just normal fucking people living their goddamn lives you know mm-hmm. but like newspapers like oan just want to sensationalize everything and put a slant on it oof Maybe K Fox fourteen El Paso wasn't the uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that wasn't the play there. The, the local Fox subsidiary. Yeah. What is KTSM? I don't know numbers. Uh, you, what? You, so if I said one, two, three, you would be like, what I is don't that? know letters. You just said numbers. I, I'm I, so I, confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. Thanks for catching on to the bit, though. That was a bit? No. Actually, what the fuck? Nothing's a bit. <clears throat> everything's Phoenix, a bit. Whoa, dude. The, apparently, I, I didn't know that these were still around, but it says Phoenix mom arrested her child overdose after her child overdosed on fentanyl. That's crazy, dude. I, I Wait, thought, they, they blamed the mom for her child overdosing? Well, no. They what bla- were the circumstances? They blamed, she might have actually been at fault. They blamed the mythological creature, the phoenix. Wait, what? The mom of the, the mythological cre- oh, creature. Oh, what? Cre- yeah, it's real fucking weird. Oh, huh. That's neat. Yeah, I thought those were extinct. <laughs> <laughs> Be like blaming Bigfoot for my pot addiction. Holy shit. They gave... Okay, so a woman is facing a child abuse charge after her baby allegedly overdosed on fentanyl and was found to have a skull fracture, according to Phoenix Police. Holy shit. Yeah. Some That's actually fucked shit. up as fuck. They said 18-year-old... First of all, what what is an 18-year-old doing with a kid, man? That's Good crazy. Point. My sister had a kid at like 17. That's just wild to me. I mean, whatever. If that's what you want to do. It was unclear Wednesday if she has a lawyer in her kid. Oh, no. She's fucking broke. That's why. Fuck. Damn, dude. Police said they administered Narcan to the nine-month-old boy. Oh, he probably fucking got into it, bro. Oh what? shit! Oh. Arriving okay, and th- no, this is some bullshit. I this is how I know this is fucking fake. Arriving officers reported finding blue oval pills inside inside the child's crib. The fuck? Why? Why is that necessarily fake? Well, because they fucking. I mean, cops always plant shit everywhere. That's true. Dave Chappelle said that. I believe him. Yeah, I do too. There's not a lot of things that he says I believe because he's a comedian, but... But he definitely implied that cops like to sprinkle crack on dead crackheads. Yeah, I guarantee... I mean, this lady, it's... it's This is exactly what they fucking do, dude. They, they If you see... If, you, if they fit the description, which basically means a certain, like, socioeconomic, racial yeah. background... If they fit the officer's social bias for what a bad person and, is... And if they can't find something to suit their narrative, they will embellish physical evidence yeah which that's just crazy to me fucking cops i wouldn't fuck a cop (laughs) i mean have you oh my god the fact that you have to hesitate to like come up with the answer to that is just oh my god i'm gonna say no because i'm pretty sure not i was about to say you fucking although i I don't know i don't know the professions of everyone i've ever had sex with it Probably not, considering oh the company I keep. You don't, fo- you don't form intense interpersonal bonds with whoever you have sexual intercourse with? Is that a serious question? Yeah. No. What the fuck? Sometimes people just want to have sex. Dude, this guy's a slut. Literally. <clears throat> All right, anyway, moving on. Um, you just we, put that out for the whole world. Oh, hear. absolutely. Yeah, I'm a slut God, and a half. so and hot, I, actually. It. Right, oh, my God. I, I literally, like, I've, I, I do stand up, and I've done a stand up bit. That I did in front of my parents, where I talked about how much of a slut my mom was and how it runs in the family. <laughs> like, I call my sister sluts. I call myself a slut. She's single? Who? I'm just kidding. Go, my mom. Go on. Or just whoever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, my mom literally saw me do that bit, like, the whole, like, five or six minutes of it. And she was like, yeah, it's true. Oh, my Fucking God. Fucking slut pride, man. What That's of it, you know? Up. Like, who gives a shit? She was waving around the slut flag, yeah. which is... I. Some I mean, she's been married for like the past colors. 30 years. Almost. Yeah, that's pretty slutty. <laughs> no, you know what? I You say you do stand-up? Yeah. You do? A little bit. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know that. I stand up. I, I stand up to go get a beer from the fridge. I stand up <laughs> every day, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, I think it's time to move on to the next segment of our show, which is uh, the topic of today's discussion, actually. let me. Uh, I'm going to let you kick this one off. All right, folks. <clears throat> Today we're talking about 
poppers and underarm sniffing. <laughs> do they no. go together? No. Yes, okay. they do. No, I'm just kidding. They um, definitely do go together. Oh, Jesus. All right. So this is a topic that I feel very weekly about. I'm just kidding. I feel very strongly about it. I feel very it. monthly about it. What's that mean? I feel about it once a month. Oh, okay. So like, so like instead of biannual? Yeah. Anyway. Enough this, this guy reads a lot of fucking magazines, you can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I just want to talk to you today about Manscaped. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Casper Ma- No. Um, so I, I kind of I want g- to get into this asking you a single question. All right. Um, are we in nature right now? Absolutely, yeah. See, I would agree with you. And and for context, we are sitting uh, indoors. We are in a manipulated version of nature, but it's all still part of nature because we are part of nature. Yeah, I agree with you. And and a lot of and this is a lot less fun for me that you're just agreeing with me. <laughs> Maybe you should put up all right, a fight. All right. So uh, definitely not because we're indoors. This is separate from nature, dude. <clears throat> yeah, actually, I'm bored of this. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's something that I, I like to ask people a lot. Is like people have just seem seem to have this idea that there's there's a separation between like man and nature. Yeah. And like somehow that the thing that's right is man in his natural state and anything that's um unnatural is bad um or or you know is is somehow out of the order of things the natural law define unnatural yeah exactly i mean to, to me anything in the natural world is natural right it's 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 it may not be good it may not be like like i don't think a, to- a tornado is natural and i don't think that that's like a good thing yeah. or that it's just or correct and a lot of people see that as as the manifestation of the highest authority of nature which is god right so they're sending you the fucking natural disaster to punish you i, I don't necessarily think that the, that that pathology or that mentality are, are related because i think that that uh, the the position that I would advance is that the naturalistic idea comes from a very specific period of time, and it has developed and wormed its way into the way that we think about even the natural world, separated in that context from man. Right. The whole concept of natural versus unnatural, like at its core, speaks to the fucking uh, hubris of man. Because we believe that since we take something of nature and like make it our own, that separates it from nature because we're awesome, you know? Yeah, and, and, and you would think that, that maybe that's historically uh, or like a historic universal, like that humans always see themselves as above the, the, the animal kingdom. Yeah. And, you know, it is. It we're is we're maybe at the top of the animal kingdom, yeah, but we're not above exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I don't even know if we're at the top. I mean, you know, look at it. Like we've kind of controlled the world to suit our needs. We're basically at the top of the food chain. You're 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 doing a much more that you're doing a reduced version of of the thing that I'm I'm trying to pry <laughs> apart here. I mean, we we've, we've obviously been able to manipulate the Do you earth. think you're an apex predator? Me personally? Do you think you not. are an apex predator? Me no. I am look definitely not. I am gooey yeah. and soft. I would love like, to see you fucking skin a squirrel. Oh, I can actually. Yeah, I bet you can. Like, I can you skin I can, this squirrel. I can. I can butcher small game. Like I've butchered a chicken. I've seen someone butcher a deer. I get the concept. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can't. Is what you're saying? Basically, yes, I can because I am smart and I can do whatever I set my mind to. Oh my god! Not that I know how to already, but I bet I. Could. All right, Elmer Fun. <laughs> uh, but. I, th- I, 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 this is interesting that you that you that you want to say that we're I want to say we humans are somehow special or at the top, but that we're still animals and we're not we are part of nature. Definitely. I agree with those. I agree with those past those those last two. But you're still kind of seeing yourself as like as like the over with over the dominion you you have like a dominion over, oh, over nature I, I, I don't believe we deserve a position of dominance or anything like but that but you think that by evolutionary luck or by evolutionary 
fitness that our ability to uh, can use tools, construct, you know, houses, control the environment mm -hmm. that makes us like at the top. Well, or the fact that we've spread much. and can can uh, c you know contain high population densities. You in know what it actually area. is like. What it really boils down to evolutionarily what? is our ability to pass on information from generation to generation. Our ability to like, re record our thoughts. Oh, and that makes and us special. Them. Kinda, yeah. Ooh, let I me mean, tell you something. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure there's probably some fucking animal who has an oral tradition that teaches their kids how to survive in the world. There probably yeah. is a thing that exists in that They're way. They're called great tits. But we, <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not. I, I know. Not I know. Joking. That's literally like I'm the point joking. of this episode. But like, we've also developed like the written word, which is unique in the natural world. Is 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 written our written words so unique i mean i think so I, tell me more i mean if if you think i mean a cat shitting in its home range is that not a physical manifestation of some semantic content some sign that is meant to convey something yeah but that's temporary shit is temporary a fucking piece of paper that you scrawled some fucking nu lady's number because you were drunk as shit and thought you were actually getting a number and she was really just giving you some fucking rando's number. But that could be ripped up. That could have fucking cherry bomb dropped on it. <laughs> a fucking Miller Lite dropped on it. I don't know what cherry bomb is, but that is much less temporary than a shit. You ever see... Bro. You, you ever seen a tiger sh pile of tiger shit? Yeah, actually. I yeah. go to zoos. Okay, well that's when they're unhealthy. When they're like they're like feeding <laughs> they them only like, shit when they're unhealthy. Is well, no, no, saying? no. They're they're feeding them like fish slurry. Ugh. I mean, you, I mean, it's like, or like you know, sheep head. Yeah. I mean, to me, having seen a tiger in real in real life that eats uh, raw gazelle flesh. Uh, if you look at it when it hardens, it becomes gilded and shiny. Gross. It's actually quite beautiful. <laughs> I, don't, no, I don't know that, what I don't that know. It does sound pretty cool. That's just my go to response <laughs> to shit like that. Yeah, it is gross and I completely made that up. <laughs> you son of a bitch. All right. Yeah, I mean so I I think that this kind of is is indicative of a an intellectual stream. I mean, even your resistance to identify uh, human language and and nat as a as as natural language. Of course, you didn't say that, but but I mean to, that there that there's something that separates it that makes it a a, a different uh, thing than language or communication <laughs> systems in animals is indicative is tied to the same reason why you're so resistant to the idea or maybe maybe so affirmative of the idea that humans are at the top of the evolutionary food chain that we are the fucking top of the pops that we're the fucking big boys in town we're the only game in town when it comes to doing what we do and i'm here to tell you that is a reactionary position that is a strain that, that uh, of thought that, that, that can be traced all the way back to in like enlightenment thinking um, which is getting is has has had some resurgence lately. You know, have you have a lot of these people that are like like Richard Dawkins. You know, these like new atheist guys who are like who are like, you know, you have to be fucking rational. You have to be like you have to think. That's like fucking. It seems like it's new. It's fucking not. And they're fucking. They th they use science to fucking talk about all this shit. And it's very fucking reactionary. It's very sing sing centered on the individual. It's very centered on the belief that. The individual human of uh, has uh, man and not man as a collect, but man as a, as a perfect concept, an ideal has dominion over nature, and and there, it's, it's, it's connected in so many fucking ways because it's like when you think about it, the biggest one of the biggest proponents of natural language, uh, natural language in animals was literally the sign underwritten fucking Richard Dawkins. You know what I'm saying? Like there is a particular reason why we want to see human languages special or, 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 or human nature as, as something different. It is to, it's to, to <clears throat> lift up humans as powerful and the individual as, as, as being 
the 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 most important unit, right? I mean, I see what you're saying, but are humans not powerful? Don't don't humans when they work together have basically ultimate power over any other living organism on this world? I mean, entire villages get destroyed by uh, elephants all the time. <laughs> of course, it's because they piss it off. But uh, I'm okay. Well, if we're so powerful, then why the fuck do we, up until the fucking turn of the 1900s, did you? If we got a fucking cut in 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 a mildly dirty place, uh, and I don't mean the cut being in a mildly dirty place, such as in your. Mm -mm, private <laughs> what i mean is <laughs> what i mean is like 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 if you're at your buddy's house right and he's like yo come check out my fucking sawmill that i have uh, uh indentured servants work and then you're like oh dude that's dope are they getting paid and you're and then he's like no what the fuck does that have to do with anything oh i'm just saying you if you get if you get cut in his little in your the little in your buddy's little saw shop Oh, and then see. you fucking get an infection Dirty and you place. die. That was, a, that was a stretch for a bit. What? I stretched beforehand. I don't need to stretch <laughs> now. <clears throat> I warmed up, okay? But so, and yeah, we get, if we're so powerful with the way we uh, work together, uh, how come we get beat by, literally, opportunistic infections are a system of multiple species and multiple conspecifics within those species working together to fuck you over i will say that the fact that um that is like a less of a problem today than it's ever been is a testament to the notion of humans working together Bruh. through the generation MRSA. what you ever seen MRSA? i don't know you ever seen is. someone with a MRSA infection no stands for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus it's literally necrotic tissue as in you got fucking pussy ass holes in your in your body and you're they are eating themselves flesh eating bacteria all right so you're bringing up like one example of a bad infection that still exists but i'm saying like you, you there's probably a graph somewhere that uh verifies this but i'm not i'm not gonna look that up but like yeah we don't have a jamie yeah um, hey jamie pull that up but like just the whole i shit um just the fact that there are fewer infections today than there were, say, 100 years ago because we learned about germs and how to prevent them from coming into our body and how to save our bodies once they do come into our bodies. Like, that fact, like, we, we pass that information on through the generations. Like, we built upon previous knowledge. We've worked together as a world to, like, make sure that we have the medical tools necessary to protect ourselves from this kind of malady. It's pretty fucking cool. Like, that's pretty powerful, in my opinion. Like, it's pretty unique because, like, I ain't ever seen sharks work together like that, you know? The exact thing that we're fighting works together more efficiently to constantly lock themselves in a fucking evolutionary arms race with us. So you're we're not we're special. Against germs? Yes. I mean, think about how, how, how you want to talk about the transfer of information. Okay. You want to talk about the transfer of information? Uh, um, you're going to bring a fucking RNA and DNA and shit. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> horizontal transfer of, of yeah, genetics. Uh, honestly, I think, I think we're getting a little in the weeds here about, yeah, we right. about, about humans versus germs. I personally am team germs because I'm a cynical bastard. <laughs> and also because I will be, I, I will profit off of the downfall of humanity. So, um, I'm just going to say today's episode is sponsored by Satan. Um, I'm just kidding. He's not a sponsor. He's just a friend of the podcast. He's just a fan. So, yeah. You want to talk about... Uh, you want to talk about the nut hatch? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I got a nut hatch right here for you, bud. By the way, we're about 44 minutes in, just so you know. Cool. Yeah. I tried to keep a better uh, track on time, but it's I just bro, we got caught up. Figured we out. got caught up. We got caught up. Um, you know what? I want. I really want to. I really want to put a pin in this. I want to revisit this. I really think this would be interesting because I kind of got lost and caught up 
in in your anthropocentric bullshit. And so I kind of want to I kind of want to revisit this because in, in my in my opinion the the. I don't know that I can convince you necessarily that humans aren't the fucking hottest and latest and greatest. Oh, I hold no firm opinions. I was just playing devil's advocate. Oh my god, I <laughs> wasted all that time for nothing. Okay, but I, what I want, what I really want to fucking get into is 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 the idea that like this 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 thing that you're that you're that you're talking about is 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 kind of a, it's a brain worm. It's a brain worm that presents itself both simultaneously as the latest and greatest scientifically but also because of you know darwin because of because of the idea of science you know and 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 cons- like scientific or, uh, achieve ach- scientific based consensus you know peer review and all this stuff but also as the oldest thing in in in, in town you know it's like it's and it has that that prestige factor because I mean, it's, it's been nature. around for long enough and it's been uh, adopted by enough yeah. smart people, but it's fucking not, it's a new phenomenon and it's an insidious one. I, I just, I just want to sort of, Oh no. What'd you do? Nothing. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Um, although, all right. I, I do think today we can just like skip the third segment and just like continue on with this. Line okay. Of, that sounds, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I just want to say like, up. This let me let me read you this, this and this comes from um, uh, this comes from the naturalistic fallacy is modern by uh, Lorraine Dastin. Um, I have no idea when when this was written, <clears throat> two thousand fourteen something like that. All right, so a seven year old article. Go on. Oh my god, it's literally intellectual. It's not. It's not, bro. It's not news, bro. I know. I understand. I, I, go on. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. Um, honestly, like I do actually hold firm opinions. Um, I just like saying bullshit to you know, fuck with you. Okay. So I, I appreciate that, <laughs> uh, because it makes it fun for me and it makes the time fly. Cause I, you know, I can just, yeah, I just talk forever about it, but about anything really. But I, I just want to share with you this quote. Um, and, and there's, there's some context here is basically the, the question being asked here is, you know, what, why is it that the naturalistic fallacy is sort of like I was saying, has that dual nature to it, the objectivity of science and the prestige of being as ancient as the natural world. And the answer that the, the, the author here is proposing is that the, the reason is and I quote, the reason is nonetheless, uh, the reason is nonetheless atten- attending to the crooked trajectory of the naturalistic fallacy in that it, it may accomplish two eminently historical goals. First, it will be a first step to our histori- historicizing our own categories of analysis. And second, once historicized, these categories may well change both our diagnosis of and therapy for uh, illegitimate invocations of, of nature's authority. We may what even, is, what is, Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. What is an invocation of nature's authority? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. So that, I mean, the the naturalistic fallacy really re- relies on this whole idea that, that there is some, uh, there's some special, uh, special right that by some, by which some natural thing, God. or natural phenomenon, has to govern the actions or govern the correctness of something, right? God. And I, yeah, like God, exactly, because God created the natural world, or or even in the case of the new atheists, you know, Dawkins and Us. all those guys, yeah, right, or or in the case of evolutionary psychology, because also evolution ha- ran its course in the the way that it did in a correct way or in the most advantageous way to secure the individual's uh, reproduction or whatever the fuck, whatever, you know, the fitness to reproduce that it must be in some way, right. No matter how See, that's the dubious fucking, the argument is. That's literally like, that is like the, the final and best argument against pretty much any like, um, uh, uh, What's the word? Uh, any imp- uh, implication of dominance or 
like superiority because we're still here. Therefore we are better. Literally the only thing that's being measured is our ability to be here, our Mm -hmm. ability to reproduce and not die so we can reproduce again. And like, is that necessarily the best thing? Like what, what is being measured here besides resilience, I guess? Like, what is the point of that as being like the yardstick for greatness? Just because we're still here? Well, when you come at it from a very reactionary lens, a very like human centered lens, it's because we think we're so great. So the fact that whatever natural force or natural way of being has led to us being here, that means it must be right. Because we are, we are projecting our own ideas of success based on our own history, whether we realize it's a historical one or not, or our own set of values or the way that we've become what we are on other things and accepting or expect, sorry, expecting that those things come to being, you know, the same way that, that, that if they've come to be the same way, that must mean they're as right or as correct or as, uh, you know, good as we are. It's in the, the, I think a lot of, a lot of times you'll see people refer to this as like, like the is ought thing. I don't really know what that means exactly, but it's basically a way to say that because, because something is this way, this is how we should proceed with it, you know, from a moral standpoint or an ethical standpoint, or just as simple as like noticing patterns in nature and being like, Oh, I, I, you know, we should all try to strive to be that way. And, and that's, you know, a lot of times that gets invoked that authority again, coming back to the, to the, the passage we read is, is that authority is getting invoked for things as, as, goofy as like homophobia right it's not that people come up with these these naturalistic accounts of how human behavior should go based are you saying it's wrong to hate the gays oh no you should hate them just for a different reason than (laughs) than this okay yeah absolutely you you should you should hate gays because they love disney they love musical theater (laughs) and as a fan of disney an extremely straight and not gay at all fan of Disney. I'm the only one that can like Disney because it's God's entertainment. Exactly. I'm sorry, I derailed you. No, it's okay. I mean, I mean, it gets it gets back to what we're trying to say here, or what, not the, what I'm trying to say. What right, we're so discussing is that that homophobia is seen as unnatural because it's or not homophobia. Sorry, homosexual behavior is seen as unnatural because. Because it's not for the purpose of reproduction. Which is uh, in itself a fallacy because homosexuality occurs in nature all the fucking time. Exactly. They don't even play by their own rules. All right. So I just want to, uh, before we wrap things up, I just want to like let you get to the point of the title of the podcast, or the episode, rather. Um, the Great yeah. Tit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and this is, this is, this is sort of the 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 common line here is that the nat, nat, naturalism uh, the natural naturalistic fallacy presupposes i guess that um that each individual is sort of out for their own gain and that's how evolution works you know the survival of the fittest is has been applied misapplied as by some accounts uh, to individual actions and in things like social darwinism and whatever Right. But in, in reality, you know, and, and there's this is a matter of, of pretty hot debate. I mean, species, interspecies communication, interspecies cooperation, and just generally connections between both species in their own population or, or conspecific individuals. And also between species, there is a great amount of evidence for this happening in the natural world that is that is often railed against um by s- people as recently as you know 1978 with with Richard Dawkins and Krebs and and you know 2008 um with with Phillips and i mean it's this is the kind of stuff that was that caught the eye of revol- it's often seen as a, like a left wing right wing type thing because this this there was a whole book by you know the famous guy uh, Kaprokin talking about birds. I mean, birds are like you social, you know, or bees, like bees are you social animals and, and birds. I mean, um, 
Let me just pick out this this. Uh, What's the word for like not a parasitic relationship, but like a like a quasi parasitic relationship that's mutually beneficial? Like, there's a word for that in nature. Symbiosis. There it is. Yeah. Sy- symbi- like just the fact that that concept exists is like an admission and recognition of like the benefits of working together, because like there are plenty of species that exist symbiotically with another species, like necessarily so because they've like aided each other in their own evolutions. And like they pretty much rely on each other at this point. No, yeah, that's exact. That's exactly right. I mean, it's and it's it's universal. It's almost universal. I hate I hate to make that claim that amongst the animal kingdom it's universal, or it's not just the animal kingdom. It's also plants. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, mycorrhizae will fix nitrogen for. Even, even humans, there's like one obvious example that I can point to is mitochondria in our de- like in our fucking uh, cells. That is yeah, a, it's the powerhouse of the cell. It's a fucking foreign yeah, entity that, that like incorporated itself into human cells, and now it's like literally just part of humanity. But it's not human. But it, like we're working together with them to be human. Like we would not exist without mitochondria, and it might not be mitochondria the thing that I'm thinking of. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that's that's what it is. But like, uh, they brought this shit up in fucking um, a wrinkle in time. Um, <laughs> sue me, but it's a good book. Uh, but like, it is definitely interesting to think about because like, we would not exist were it not for this forward entity that like incorporated itself into our cells. And like, what does that mean? Like, does that mean that mitochondria is also at the top of the food chain? Like, what is that? <laughs> At this at this point, I would just consider this them part of us. But yeah, I mean, their origins, yeah, are that. That you're right. It was a symbiotic relationship. Of course, that's something that we can't directly verify. We can only sort of speculate. Speculate on. Well, it's it's informed speculation, I guess. Yeah. But I think even just looking at species that we know and love today, um, you know, like coyotes or badgers. Um, I mean, there's so many examples that go dating back like to the mid 1900s of you know actual animal researchers and ethologists and and biologists studying badgers and coyotes hunting together in like tactical formations you know what i'm saying it's fucking crazy but i just want to read read you this quote um i just want to read you this quote from um, what's this guy's name? Kaprotkin. And nobody murder me for talking about an anarchist. I just think, I just think, I just think that he's uniquely suited to, um, uh, all right. I, I apologize for derailing you. I gonna have to derail you though. Like, I do think we should like explain the reasoning for the, the, the great tit and the, 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 Oh yeah. No, I mean, that's what I'm trying to get to the, here. The so, cock hatch. So, what the fuck was it? Nut hatch. Nut hatch. There it is. <laughs> um, I mean, Close hunting enough. and feeding is in, in, in common is so much the habit of the feathered world that more quotations hardly would be needful. And this is from mutual aid, uh, by Kaprokin. Even the strongest birds of prey are powerless in the face of the association of our smallest bird pets. Even eagles, even the powerful and terrible booted eagles and the martial eagle, which is strong enough to carry away a hare and a young antelope in its claws, are compelled to abandon their prey to the hands of those beggars, the kites. And let me be clear, the ki- a kite is a type of bird. So, uh, I mean, it, it's very common in the bird world. S- and, and so much so uh, that... Birds with such great names as the Nuthatch and the Great Tit are literally able to distinguish subtle differences in in various bird calls, which can can you know broadcast the location and size of a predator. And I mean, they basically get, they all get together and and basically turn these the. Uh, you know, it's it's like every Wednesday at twelve uh, twelve o'clock here in. Uh, a uh, little Italy, we get a little hur- hurricane siren. That's right, hurricanes, not I tornadoes. Mean, you may think that's impressive, but like, if I spend all fucking day listening to bird calls, I bet I could do that shit too. That's oh all I'm God. saying. That's all I'm saying. You're so smart. <laughs> but I, I mean, these uh, these fucking birds basically turn into a hold on decentralized network of <laughs> cool. of fucking you know b- broadcasting and and amplifying 
literally information about where the predator is and how big it is. And if that's not fucking natural language, if that's not using natural language to fucking cooperate across long distances and and learning over time. Across the boundary of species even. Yeah, that, that, then I don't know what is. I mean... Yeah. So what is so, the uh, the point of that observation? We're all in this together. We are not hatches, and we have great tits. <laughs> we all did hatch from nuts. But some of us have great tits. Ah, all tits are great. I okay. have great tits. All tits are great. <clears throat> well, I don't know about that. Well, I do. Um, I've seen yeah, most of them. So They're I, all great. I think I think this is definitely an interesting conversation that we may revisit in the future. Maybe. Um, I think that there's a lot more that can be said about this that I, I don't think we really got to, like how the reactionary elements that maybe criticize this this belief kind of run ethology and science in general. Oh wow. Maybe right. that's something we can talk about in in, in, in the future. But I just want to. Uh, you know, hit you guys with some some words from our sponsors today. Um, today's episode is brought to you by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Uh, use my checkout code George Bush Dog Painting to receive a free Liberate Occupied Greater Bhutan shirt and a Chicago style bow tie and also deep dish pizza themed nail grooming kit. Uh, look fly and uh, you know fly drones doing it. <laughs> uh, this episode is also sponsored by the Melinda Gates Endowment for Excellent in Excellence in Rucksack Pursuit. Is your ex-husband an evil piece of shit? Take him for everything he's worth and then give it to a bunch of random people because he's a huge douchebag. <laughs> I love it. All right. Is that all yeah, we got? I think so. Hey, well, cool. I think this is a good conversation. I think this was a good conversation, honestly. Um I had a good yeah, time. Yeah, I was really bored the entire time. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> well, thanks for listening to this course, the only podcast about politics and philosophy ever. We're not a political podcast. I just want to be No, not record. politics, news. I'm I want to go on record and say this is not a, pol- a podcast about news, politics, or philosophy. This is not about any of that stuff. It's, it's not even a podcast, nature. actually. It's about nature. We love plants. We love animals. This is we not love a podcast. Animals being friends. This is a locally sourced um, information source. It's not a podcast. This is just a thing that we do for our friends. I do it for me. That's fair. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>